Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. MSNBC accuses President Trump of siding with neo-Nazis and child predators. President Trump came forward in defense of Roy Moore, because there is no evidence that the allegations are true. Liberals are furious that the president believes in innocent until proven guilty. Even though they shun Bill Clinton's accusers they treat Roy Moore accusations like they are proven facts. In an awful rant MSNBC's John Heilemann accused Trump of siding with pedophiles. Trump sees himself in Roy Moore, he does. He sees the politics of it too. The momentum was for Hillary Clinton, all of the polls said Hillary Clinton was going to win and there's all these people in the Trump base standing up saying, fake news, fake news, fake news. He listens to these press conferences, said Heilemann, even though that was fake news. He recognizes the dynamic in Alabama where he hears Roy Moore's defenders attacking the Washington Post, saying that the women made it all up. He thinks the woman who attacked him made it all up, said Heilemann. He added, the best analogy to me for this, trying to loop all this together, is Charlottesville. Was there no one who could go into the Oval Office and say to Donald Trump it's bad to be on the side of neo-Nazis? The answer was no then, and the answer is no now, said Hilleman. What's worse, a child predator or a neo-Nazi? I'm not going to make a call on that, but Donald Trump didn't seem to find a problem to be on the side of neo-Nazis and apparently he doesn't see a problem being on the side of the accused child predators either, he said. Is MSNBC fake news? This was not a scuffle, Rand Paul's wife says what really happened during his attack. A great deal of mystery has surrounded the attack Republican Senator Rand Paul suffered at the hands of his Bowling Green, Kentucky neighbor Arnie Boucher. Paul's wife Kelly felt motivated to finally clear the air about what actually happened that day to severely injure her husband. Wrote Kelly in an op-ed for CNN about the severity of Rand's injury. The average person takes 20,000 breaths a day. Since November 3, my husband, Rand Paul, has not taken a single one without pain. He has not had a single night's sleep uninterrupted by long periods of difficult breathing or excruciating coughing. She added, There have been several nights where I had my hand on my phone ready to call 911 when his breathing became so labored it was terrifying. The lawyer for assailant Boucher depicted the assault as a very regrettable dispute between two neighbors over a matter that most people would regard as trivial. He added, the unfortunate occurrence of November 3 has absolutely nothing to do with either politics or political agendas. Kelly said that the media had not reported the story truthfully, and that they had not spoken to their neighbor Ernie in a decade. Said Paul, nobody in our family has, nor have we communicated with anyone in his family. With Rand's travel to D.C. in the last seven years, he has rarely seen this man at all. She described, the only dispute existed solely in the attacker's troubled mind, until, on a beautiful autumn day, he ran down the hill on our property and slammed his body into Rand's lower back as he stood facing away, wearing noise-canceling headphones to protect his ears from the lawnmower. Kelly then clarified, this was not a scuffle, a fight or an altercation as many in the media falsely describe it. It was a deliberate, blindside attack. The impact left Rand with six broken ribs, three displaced, pleural effusion and now pneumonia. Are you glad Kelly told the truth about this strange, unprovoked attack? Tucker goes nuclear on Lib who says Mexico treats its minorities better than America. The NFL has been trying to expand its presence internationally, so it recently had the Oakland Raiders and the New England Patriots play a game in Mexico City. Raiders running back Marshawn Lynch somehow thought that this made for a great excuse to insult America further, and ended up standing for the Mexican national anthem and sitting for the American one. 
Lynch understandably took a great deal of heat for this. Of course, some on the left came to Lynch's defense and said he did it because Mexico treats minorities better than America does. When sports agent Anthony Tall tried to make this same argument on Fox News, Tucker Carlson called him out for how ridiculous it is. Said Tucker, I don't understand why Marshawn Lynch is under the impression that Mexico is a more virtuous country than his own. Where would he get that idea? Anthony replied patronizingly, You have to ask yourself what would drive someone, a multi-million dollar athlete, to stand during the Mexican national anthem and not want to stand on his own? Where does that come from? I'm going to say it he comes from a lot of statistics. Retorted Carlson, what it doesn't come from is a deep knowledge of Mexico. He went on, have you seen the people who run Mexico? Is there a country in the world with a firmer color bar than Mexico? I don't think there is. Is there a country with a more grotesque history of slavery than Mexico? How do Afro-Mexicans do? Do you have any idea? Does Marshawn Lynch have any idea? I mean, let's be real here, you'd rather be black in America than Mexico any day of the week. Tall disagreed and then Tucker scolded him, saying, when you're a famous person who commands the attention of an entire country, and has reaped such profound rewards from that country as Marshawn Lynch has, it doesn't mean that you have to love the country, but it means that you can't be as mindless as he is, Carlson said. You can't say something that's so stupid like, I would be treated better in Mexico. That's insane. And don't you think it's incumbent on him to maybe learn something before weighing in on a topic this divisive? Are you glad Tucker spoke out? CNN spreads disgusting rumor about Border Patrol agent murdered by illegal alien. Federal Border Agent Rahel Yal Martinez was murdered while on duty. While the cause of death hasn't been 100% proven, however, the National Border Patrol Council believes that Martinez was bludgeoned to death with rocks. Liberals won't want to admit this, however, since it proves that there are dangerous people on the border trying to get into our country. CNN's Allison Camrota insisted that his death could be the result of a fall. It seems that there were no shots fired, that it was blunt force trauma, said Republican Rep. Dan Donovan. Could it have been from a fall? asked Camrota. You know, that's up to the medial examiner to determine. But one gentleman was killed and one was severely injured, it just shows you how dangerous the border is, said Donovan. However, Martinez Union spokespokeman said it was definitely not a fall. There's no way he fell. Border Patrol agents are like mountain goats. They don't fall. Especially two at the same spot, said the spokesperson. Border Patrol Council President Brandon Judd believes this incident shows the USA's need for a border wall. I do absolutely approve that we do need barriers in strategic locations, which is exactly what we've been saying from the very beginning. I think that you have to, as the President of the United States, I think that you have to illustrate examples of why a wall would be needed. So, I absolutely approve of his tweet saying this is an example that shows why we need a wall said Judd. Planned Parenthood releases guide on how to deal with pro-life people at Thanksgiving. Want advice on how to deal with tricky relatives at Thanksgiving? The last people you would go to is an organization that tells you to kill people when you find them to be an inconvenience. However, Planned Parenthood posted their advice Thanksgiving, how to deal with difficult people. Self-care, make decisions about what to do around Thanksgiving so you feel safe, whether that means not going home at all, going home with a friend or partner by your side, or only visiting for dinner. Build allyship with family members who love and respect you, the more people in your family who can call people out, or even better, call people in, on their problematic behavior the less acceptable it will be," wrote Planned Parenthood. Here's some problematic behavior. Killing babies. Engage people in conversation, if you feel safe doing so, start with a mutual value, like freedom, respect, or love, they wrote. It's funny that they left out life. 
take a stand, it's totally okay to tell someone that their language or behavior is hurtful and unacceptable to you. Tell them about the impact it has on you and why, and what the consequences of their actions are to the larger community, writes Planned Parenthood. Tell them you expect better, and what the consequences are if they don't change, like cutting off contact with them or leaving. And you're allowed to end the conversation, leave the room, and set whatever boundaries you need to feel safe, they write. The only person who can't feel safe however, are the unborn babies. Liberal Sarah Silverman exposes how she fell in love with Trump supporters after sitting down with them. Ultra-liberal comedian Sarah Silverman has had a massive change of heart after actually sitting down and speaking with Trump supporters. When you're one-on-one -on -one with someone who doesn't agree with you, or whose ideology is different than yours, when you're face-to-face, -face, your porcupine needles go down. The surprise was, I fell in love with them. I had a great time with them and I felt comfortable," said Silverman. I'm finding if I do engage with someone who is angry at me, or angry and I'm a place where they can put that anger, it's almost always a good experience, because more than anything, all of us what we have in common is, we want to feel seen," she said. We want to feel like we exist. We really should, all of us, work on not getting our self-esteem from outside forces, but it is so much when somebody just sees you. It's just like, everything melts away," she said. She sat down with a pro-Trump family for her new Hulu show I Love You, America, where she explores America like an alien going to another planet. We want to feel like we exist. We really should, all of us, work on not getting our self-esteem from outside forces, but it is so much when somebody just sees you. It's just like, everything melts away. We just all just human out again," she said. However, she still hates President Trump. After his victory she claimed to have survival-based fear and wanted a military coup against the president. It's nice to see her maybe becoming a little less crazy after her experience.